Welcome back, Zero K fans. Now that it's done, I am Shadow Fury 33 once again. So I'm still your host. I've probably got to think of a few more snappy ways of coming in when I am coming in as a welcome back. That wasn't one of them. Let's get to the game. It's Stuart 98, who we saw last time, playing fairly well, but not as well as they would like against Click for Victory, a rather new player I'm curious about. But I believe Stuart requested this game as well, so I'm curious what happened. I mean, if it's a new player, it seems like it'd be kind of straightforward. Usually you'll out macro them regardless. And Stuart was doing macro fairly well last game, so I think they're okay that way. As long as they scout, that's fine. As long as they... I mean, I know that they're a Planetary Annihilation player, so they should be okay with their ma macro, I would, I would expect. Seems reasonable to expect. And Click for Victory, on the other hand, is playing a little bit awkward. Yeah, the spectator's pointing out the factory at the front is a really strange position. I, I don't think they're trying to ramp block. I think they're just trying to be forward with it. I think they're trying to put it as far forward as they could while still staying on the high ground. Because, I mean, it could be they were trying to ramp block, but that's not going to work. This entire area is bot pathable. Like everything here. That red... That red just means it's slow. It's the purple that's non-passable. So basically that entire area is bot passable. Which might come as a surprise, or it might be something they expect and they're trying to be proxy. That's just an unusual position. Anyway, getting some scouting in, so they know what Stewart's up to. They know where they are, they know that they're not too defended right now in their main base. But yeah, normally you'd set up your factory right here. Not here. So I don't know exactly what was going on there, but yeah, that's what happened. So... With that, Click for Victory is actually a little bit ahead. Slightly ahead economically. Stewart should be getting ahead very shortly, though. Or getting back up. Where? Oh, I see. Right, forward mechs. Yeah, so that's probably why they built the shield by factory there, so they can get that forward mechs a little bit sooner. But it doesn't help that much. And also, they have to get that one, which is a riskier mech than this one over here. They can build one defender, no problem. Actually, one defender up here is no problem. But this front mechs here is open on a lot of sides. Very difficult to defend. Whereas this one also leads into these mechs down here. Which, those are fairly safe. I'm not sure what the motivation was. Yeah, because this is actually... Okay, it's not totally restricted to bots. This area is, actually. This area, it can only be attacked from this side. Longer range, obviously, can get in. But I, th I think Glaives... Mm, yeah, Glaives, I think, would be just a bit too short range. So in this matchup, it would actually be a good idea. But it looks like no, Click for Victory going over to the northeast, a rather odd choice, while Stuart getting a very large army, and against these bandits, not large enough. Not enough glaives. They really should be considering getting some warriors, or possibly getting... No, warriors are the best option right now. There's no rogues coming in, there's certainly no thug law coming in. Just bandits. Although they can get them out of position. That works. Because right now, these bandits will lose. There are too many glaives here, the bandits will lose. Even with the glaives being distracted, Stuart will win this fight. Handily. Well, even- I don't think- they, oh, they lost one glaive. I thought they'd get through without losing a single glaive. Still, that was an easy win. And that's two fewer bandits to actually help defend. Now, this is not an easy win. In fact, this is suicide. Stuart, run away, run back. I really tried to get rid of tech defense, but that's not worth it. That was- I don't know exactly what happened there. I don't know why Stuart ran forward like that, because that was a mistake. I think they must have figured they could have taken out that Lotus. Didn't count on the bandits coming in from behind. But you're right in their base. You're in their main base. They're going to hit you with everything. And they're going to have more than you. Unless you're massively ahead economically. And right now, the players are neck and neck. In fact, Click for Victory is a little bit further ahead because they have... Well, they have more energy. And they apparently have been using more stuff, too. <laughs> Off by APM. Okay, I guess that might be an issue. There might have been an issue in the last game, too. I noticed there were a lot of units idle. Mostly, I think the issue was there was too few, there were too few workers, and of course, scouting. This one, on the other hand, yeah. Oh, okay, so they just didn't retreat because of they didn't click on it. Like, they had several seconds. I had plenty of time. Okay, I'm being facetious, but still, I mean, that actually was a decent amount of time to retreat. They couldn't have saved all of them if they were being slow, but they could have saved at least two or three. And once again, these glaives are just walking in. I mean, the bandits are on fight micro, and actually both are on, okay, that's why. Both players are on fight micro. They're not even bothering to micro the fights. That's not gonna work for Stuart. 
Glaives lose to bandits in a straight fight. Like, they're both doing the AI half competent micro setup rather than actually being micro by human players. Glaives you lose to bandits hard. Okay, not that hard. It's like a five. It, it's. It's five glaives for every four bandits is roughly making cost. But still, it's. It's not an easy matchup. Especially if they're not actually f being microed manually. Being microed manually, glaives can do a number on pretty much anything. Rather, to the consternation of the balancers, or to Google Frog, I'm, I imagine. Because glaives are extremely versatile units, but they require a lot of micromanagement to work for that. Bandits work okay with that, but they just aren't as quick. It's a bit slower, a bit less agile, just a bit, but it makes a difference. But Stuart, once again, just throwing these glaives to their deaths. How many glaives are... Well, almost 800 metal worth of glaives, just for click for victory to eat up. Oh, even more now. I mean, sheesh, that's... Uh, yeah, add another 200 to that. That's almost 1,000 metal worth of reclaim. Right there, for the taking, for click for victory, well inside their territory. I mean, Stuart, they are ahead, but they're not even building up. They have no workers. That's the biggest thing I'm noticing. Stuart's just building up. Like, this is actually, if we're in fact that's infinite build, this is very much a total annihilation build setup. We just have dozens of units, if not a hundred units, rather than just using one or two on infinite build. But no workers. I don't know why Stuart's not building more workers. They only have two. They have, okay, one more worker getting some caretakers finally, but they've been accessing for some time. Click for Victory has not been accessing. They are they are doubling down on their factory. They aren't economically ahead, but their production doesn't care. Their production is acting like it's better. Like, right now, Click for Victory effectively has twice the economy of Stuart because of how much Stuart's been excessing and how little Stuart's been powering their factory. Click for Victory, on the other hand, it, they just need to turn this military advantage into a territory advantage and then into an economy advantage. But they have Reclaim to work with. Although right now, their wind has died down. They're not that much Reclaim work. In fact, they're starting to get into a bit of a problem. They need to build some solar plants. Now, I'm curious, what does everyone know? So right now, Click for Victory knows nothing. Stewart's knows nothing. Actually, they know that some bandits are coming over the hill. They don't know how many. They don't know there's actually a sizable force of bandits coming over the hill here. Both players... I'm kind of surprised that both players are still going for raiders. Man, I suppose it hasn't quite gone to the point where either one has to respect the other's raider play enough to go for riots or otherwise escalate. And the commander is... Stuart... Uh, Stuart... You, your commander... It's... It's dead, Stuart. A single bandit. Okay, so... There's two things I suggest for Stuart. One of them is... <laughs> kill come with one bandit. I gotta turn those off. I keep forgetting to turn those off. But yes, micro challenge. There, there are notifications when the commander gets hit. They aren't the most audible, or at least they're, they're audible, but it's like it's a little hard to necessarily determine them, differentiate them from the noise. But still, hero bandit. I'm actually kind of surprised that happened. I think it's more that it just so happened because light particle beam. That was really weird. I guess it's just yeah, just the position, that specific position. The commander could not shoot through the mountain. And the bandit could hit it. It hit the commander's head, but the commander's rifle was too far in the mountain. Very bizarre position right there. So it is... It's going to be a bit of a problem there. On the other hand, with... I mean, Stuart's got that set up. Click for Victory's got that set up. Just really, Click for Victory is way ahead right now. They are so far ahead, and it all comes down to the fact that Stuart was not... I don't know if Stuart disconnected or something, but yeah, they didn't power anything with their factory. They had they had the economic advantage, but did not turn into production, allowing Click for Victory to get way ahead when it came to economy. Right now, Click for Victory is ahead in economy. And also, sacrificing a thousand metal that early on, like just giving a thousand metal to Click for Victory, that was huge. That was absolutely massive. I think that more than anything, I mean, that combined with the fact that Click for Victory did have did have a stronger production overall. They have a weaker energy economy. They need to get more they need to get more solar plants, but honestly, the game is over. And I don't know why they went for a sumos of all things. Sumos are okay anti-raiders, but Click for Victory has just so much to work with.
So many raiders for one thing, but also just so many units, period. And so much money that if they want to switch to skirmishers to get rid of the sumo, that can be done trivially. And this is the end of the game. I'd say it really just comes down to Stuart threw units away. Like, throwing one or two glaives away for scouting isn't a bad idea. The information is worth it. Throwing two dozen glaives away, trying to deal damage to an opponent's base in their main base that early in the game, when you don't have APM, like when you're actually saying, help, how do I APM? If you're having a hard time controlling units, stick to riots and skirmishers. Don't stick to raiders too much. I mean, raiders are very powerful to scale wealth APM, but they also die pretty quick to riots, so you can just use those. Like, use riots. Go to, like, the shield factor is great if you don't have very high APM, honestly. It, it works better if you don't have high APM because then the cloaky buff factory does. Because the cloaky factory requires, well, things like size, which you have to be careful about, glaives, which scale extremely low to APM due to their speed. Bandit scale okay, but not great. And Stuart right now is so far behind. Click for victory is just going to go for skirmishes right now. I mean, they already had the felon. They had the felon. These convicts need to assist the felon, though. And actually, the felon's a bad thing. They need rogues for the sumo. Badly, they need rogues. The sumo is actually going to be a... That's going to be a problem for the felon. Like, there are more felons coming in, but the... I don't know if, if Click for Victory is aware of the shield link mechanic. Like, if these convicts were assisting that felon... That felon would be able to hit everything. Because right now it's going to run out of ammo before even hitting the sumo. Like, like I said, just this... This right here... They've got nothing. They can't do anything. But I don't know if Click for Victory is aware of that. So yeah, Click for Victory, if you're watching this... Shields that are linked to each other share shield energy, more or less. So if you have a bunch of shields, if you need something like Felon that uses their shields as ammo, and you have a bunch of other units, like Thugs, or Band, or sorry, or Convicts, that have shields as well, or Aegis, obviously, is the big one. Or sorry, I mean Aspis. Aegis can work as well, but that's static. Aspis, more so. Then the Felon will have far more ammo to work with, just because it's going to pull off the shields from everything else. It'll strip down your shield ball to nothing, but it'll kill stuff. And that's what you want, ultimately. But at any rate, Stuart, surprisingly, despite the fact that they have a really good position overall, they have not built up. Like, sorry, not Stuart. Click for Victory has not built up. Stuart could theoretically come back, because Click for Victory has gone away from keyboard? I'm seriously not sure. I honestly don't know what's happening. Like, where is Click for Victory? I'm not kidding. I, I don't know what's happening. It almost seems like they're away from keyboard right now. No, they're here. They're just not building metal extractors for some odd reason. Like, just seriously, just... Where is it? Metal extractor, although it should be control W for most players. Or I think it's just W now. But yeah, metal extractors. Build those. Build those now. That's what you need. I mean, reclaim's all well and good, but metal extractors are where it's at. Once you have the Reclaim out. Like, Reclaim is great. You really need it. But you need Metal Extractors more. Reclaim is what you do after the Metal Extractors have run out. So Stuart right now kind of getting a comeback. Just because Click for Victory doesn't have power. They don't have... They don't have enough power to support their factory. Their wind generators are once again dying down. They have no solar plants. And they have no additional metal. Like, they should right now have such an overwhelming force that Stuart would be dead. Stuart should have been dead minutes ago. I'm actually going to fast forward this replay because this is... This should have been ended minutes ago. I'm not sure why the metal extractors are not being constructed, what Click for Victory is waiting for. Now, I'm starting to think maybe they are a Starcraft player just because, I mean, they had that factory up front. Maybe that has a ramp blocking idea, which doesn't work in this game. But also, because they aren't building metal extractors, that's kind of like... In StarCraft, you go for expansions when you're sure they're secure. Like, you only go for an expansion when you know that your opponent can't kill it. Or it's highly unlikely your opponent will be able to do anything about it. That's the only time you go for it. Zero K, on the other hand, you go for it all the time. Finally, the sumo is gone, but at this point, it's still tough. Yeah, it looks like Stuart probably will throw in the towel now. But yeah, in StarCraft, you only go for it when you can't... when it's safe. In 0k, you go for it all the time. Even if it's just been destroyed. Especially if it's just been destroyed. That's the one of the things that separates a good player from a bad... Or a good player from a great player in this game. 
Great players rebuild metal extractors immediately after they're destroyed. Or almost immediately after. Like, not quite immediately, but as soon as it's remotely safe. As soon as they've pushed the enemies away, they're rebuilding those metal extractors. That's the thing great players do. And that is game. Stuart throwing in the towel. Bit disappointing, but... Yeah, kind of came down in both cases to just poor management of what they had. Although Click for Victory got away with it just because that one Sumo was the only thing working for Stuart. They didn't go for any Pyros, they didn't go for any Moderators to get rid of the fel Or not Moderators, that would have been Scuttles, I suppose. Or Jax. Jax would work. I mean, the Sumo worked wonders against the Felons. Pyros would have worked well against everything else, and then it would have been, at that point, a potential comeback. I mean, the Puppies kind of made sense because there wasn't a lot of money, but still. Just losing those glaze early on. And then losing... The, I don't know what happened. There must have been bugs going on. I don't know why Stuart asked me to cast this game, honestly. Because it it looked to me like there were bugs. Like, disconnects, maybe. Or bugs with... I think just some something weird was happening. Maybe it was just play. Maybe it was just the play wasn't particularly good. I don't know. But definitely, it looked odd. It didn't look like bad play. It looked like the game bugged out. I mean, that situation of the commander, that is so rare. I'm honestly not even sure that was supposed to happen. It just seems weird. This, this whole game just seems off to me. I mean, the way that Stuart's playing is... Okay, I don't know why they're not going for Metal Extractors. That's, did this replay desync? I don't know. I mean, it's clearly... It's a sensible enough game. It's just weird that Click for Victory is not expanding beyond their first six Metal Extractors... Not doing a lot of stuff, but then the spectators are commenting on the players not doing things. And Stuart, I mean, okay, that was a legitimate destruction of their base, but this is just weird. What is going on? I'm so confused. There we go. Okay, that was that was a strange game. Especially the ending. I have a bad feeling that that replay actually was wrong. I'm seriously concerned, but I don't know. I mean, the game had a logical conclusion. Orders didn't just stop happening, and the game overall, I mean, it kind of made sense. It just was really weird. You don't see players not building metal extractors. Like, Click for Victory is not that new. So that was just, that was strange. I don't know. Really weird play. At any rate, that was that. So that's it for me tonight. Thank you for watching. And once again, I'm changing my schedules to Tuesday, Saturday, and possibly Friday. I'm not sure about Friday yet. But Tuesday, Saturday. Wednesdays are going to be busy from now on. Or at least for a while. And I, I kind of preferred Wednesdays. But my schedule's changed. So that's that. Anyway, that's the new schedule. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this. Thanks again for watching. And have a good night, everyone.